The human eye is one of nature's finest marvels with sensitivity to just three colors, red, green, and blue, the eye is able to make pictures as wondrous as this rainbow, as spectacular as the northern lights, and as picturesque as sunset in Boston. Now, as beautiful as these images are, they raise a question. How can we get machines to perceive this visual world? How can we teach machines how to see. This is one of the core challenges in artificial intelligence, AI. And it's a hard one. If I were to show this picture to you, to any of you in the audience, you could probably tell me that there are two cars sitting in a parking lot, maybe even near a Burger King. But when a machine is asked to label this image, to draw boxes around the objects it sees, it misidentifies the reflections in the car as belonging to cyclists, and pedestrians. To overcome this problem, the self-driving car industry uses spinning rigs mounted on top of their cars, known as LiDAR. LiDAR is a new way to see the world. It's a way to see the world different from how humans do. But despite seeing the world in different ways, these cars are still not fully autonomous. These LiDAR cars need something else. But this has not stopped artists, designers, scientists, and engineers from imagining the possibilities. In this simulation, we can see a car as it smoothly avoids pedestrians by using the echoes of light from LiDAR. To take concepts like this into reality, our lab at MIT tries to build superhuman eyes to enable superhuman driving. We've started along this path many years ago. Five years ago, we had a paper from our group that tried to capture light in motion, light as it moves through this Coke bottle. Half a million dollars of equipment on an optical table, and we were able to get images like this. The following year, I and my team, we built a prototype, a benchtop prototype that scaled this idea to a $500 device. When industry labs and academia and the, even the popular press heard about our device, they wanted to come by to check it out. I guess we were in some way successful. When BBC came by for a live demo, they liked it enough that they put it on their home page. But we knew that despite this warm reception, there was a way to go. There was a ways to go in order to take this to the next level. So I'm back on the stage here in 2017 to present a new technique for LiDAR. And our invention is to essentially tag light at every micrometer. That's one-tenth the width of a human hair. To explain the significance of this invention, let me start with the way things are done today. LiDAR, light detection and ranging. A vehicle sends a packet of photons at a pedestrian that it wants to avoid and measures the echoes of light that reflects back. We know from our basic high school classes, distance equals velocity times time. Since we know the speed of light, if we can measure the echo time, we can estimate the distance. The concept is simple, but it's taken decades and decades to realize this in practice because there's a core culprit here, and that's that the speed of light is very, very fast. It's the fastest thing in the universe. In one nanosecond, in one billionth of a second, light travels one foot. So even if you had a billion frames per second camera, you would only be accurate to one foot. The industry has done a wonderful job in making cameras that are even faster so that we can tag light not at one foot, but at five millimeters. A five millimeter light tag, for example, if I wanted to scan this object, this Einstein bust, would give you a reconstruction of the object that looks something like this. The reconstruction, you can make out barely a face, but the details are lost. In situations for mission-critical applications like self-driving cars, we want the best image quality possible. And that's our invention. We call it heterodyne LiDAR, which we're trying to tag light not at five millimeters, but at two micrometers, one-tenth the width of a human hair. The core idea, the way we're able to solve this, is not by building faster and faster cameras. The way we solve this is by exploiting the natural physics of light. When I take this laser pointer and I shine it on the floor, so I don't blind you, when I shine it on the floor, 
we often think of this abstraction as a laser beam, a green beam of light just pointing towards the floor. But light is far more complex and rich than that. Light is a wave. It's oscillating trillions and trillions of times a second, up and down, up and down. And by, by exploiting these natural oscillations of light, we're able to realize very high path length tagging, very high resolution. So the idea is to send a beam of light and this wave model at a target. So we send photons and wavefronts at a target to enable two micrometer light tagging, which makes that Einstein statue look much more photorealistic. Now you can see the wrinkles in the face, the lines in the clothing, and even the hair and the mustache. Of course, the key idea is very specialized to my community of optics, and so that detail is one left that's left unsaid. But the nice thing is that this implementation does not need to be as specialized as optical implementations. It's something that can be prototyped on a bench top, on, an, on a regular work desk. And so when we took this prototype and built it, we wanted to test it against the industry metrics, what the LiDAR industry uses today, which is long range, trying to achieve half a kilometer target avoidance, evaluating low power operation, vibrations, beat note stability, and all the metrics that the LiDAR industry is traditionally interested in. And speaking of the LiDAR industry, it's one of the hottest spaces in technology today. Quanergy, all these devices are of successful companies. Quanergy, the, a company making solid state LiDARs, is a technology unicorn, meaning it's valued at more than a billion dollars. Strobe and Waymo are now subsidiaries of Google and GM. But all these successful implementations in our world, they're light tagging at millimeter precision. And so the MIT proposal is to take this idea to micrometers, one-tenth the width of a human hair. In doing so, doctors might be able to dis discriminate light paths within human body. For example, to see through the body without x-rays. Airplanes are equipped with LIDARs, but with micrometer path length separation, an airplane flying over a fruit orchard might not just be able to map out the topology, but tell you if the fruits are ripe. And finally, autonomous driving. Maybe we can have vehicles that can drive smoothly through fog, taking a dangerous road condition like this and making it appear as if the road was clear. These problems are being studied in our group. And of course, the technology details can be found on various web URLs. But I'd like to wrap this idea back to the motivation. And that's the beauty of nature's eyes. The human eye, with sensitivity to three colors, is a magical device. But it's not as well known that there are animals in the kingdom with far superior eyes, alien eyes. This is a mantis shrimp. Perhaps some of you who are food connoisseurs might know it as a menu item in Japan or Korea. But its visual system is able to pick up 16 bands of colors, only three of which humans can see. So one can only imagine, one can literally only imagine how an animal like this would perceive a rainbow. And it's these sort of motivations from biology, bio-inspiration, that encourage us to build the artificial eye for machines of the future. Thank you. Thank you.